If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta. With me, as always, is Joshua Radawan. And we are here to talk to you about your spiritual awakening. And so today, today is, this is going to be a fun one. So buckle up. This is a buckle up buttercup moment, you know, put on your big, big girl and boy pants and, and gender neutral pants. And let's get started because we're going to talk about, I don't want to, and other bready voices. So this is all about resistance today. So Josh, you, before we started talking, you, you, before we started the episode, you said that you had some stories. Well, you know, I had, I had one in particular and it was, I want to say it took place about a year ago and I, I had messaged you and I was like, you know, do you ever feel like a chess piece for your higher self? And you're just down here being moved around from place to place. And you're like, Oh honey, I get it. And you know, and I, I have such a, because I have such a resistance to feeling that I am being controlled by something else or that I, or allowing something else to be a part of me, to being part of that, that oneness. I'm like, mm, I don't like it. You know what I mean? So that, that resistance has been there for a long time because I really like the idea of, of sovereignty. So one of my biggest resistance was learning to co-create with spirit. So that is one of my favorite stories with you because you just your voice the way you're like oh honey i have been there i get it i have been there and <laughs> and what's so funny is that now when we're looking back at it and you've got a little distance and i've got a little distance you know when you say that i'm like but you are your higher self and your higher self is you so the next question and i'm so glad you brought this up because this gives me a chance to coach you on air because you know why not <laughs> Why not? I love why it. Why not? Yeah. So the next question there is, why are you attached to the role of powerless and victim? Because there's a lot of that that runs through what we've talked about over the years. And, you know, this, this being victim to your spirit world, right? Being victim to your higher self, you know, being subject to their manipulations and machinations and all the things, right? You know, and I'm the... <laughs> I, I'm the queen of telling my spirit guides to go fuck themselves. I did that for years, right? I was like, no, you're not going to tell me what to do. God forbid I should recognize that they actually were, you know, looking out for my best interests. But no, you weren't going to tell me anything. So I do get it. And at at some point we have to look at it and we have to say, okay, so what what is going on behind that? And for me, it was a control thing. I felt unsafe following their instructions, right? It, I wouldn't have been able to put it into those terms at the time, but looking back at it, it was exactly what it was for me. So when you look at it, what does it look like for you? Well, it goes back to childhood. I mean, a lot of these things go back to childhood. You know, for me, it was being in a place where there wasn't love given in the way in which I needed it. Mm -hmm. So it made me skeptical of all things on the outside and you know some of the deepest level work i've done has been in the solar plexus and then the heart chakra you know i'm just working through the solar plexus stuff now and really beginning to let people in and and you've been telling me this for a couple of years you just got to let people in and it's and it's it's funny because i i feel like i have been and i was actually tuning into this yesterday and it's like i've let people in and i've almost created this illusionary shield too right like it looks like you're in but you're not. and i was like like the wizard of oz behind this shield i'm like oh shit i was like i gotta look at this on a deeper level and that just came through yesterday and uh, you know I it's because too, if it makes you feel better <laughs> it does actually <laughs> i did exactly better. that yes i was very good at making you feel like you knew what was going on in me <laughs> yeah and the truth is is i i think i even believe it myself you know until i really took you know and, and like i said it just came up yesterday so you know, and it's, but, but it's, it's that piece from childhood, you know, that, that really instilled that. And, it, you know, it's, you know, when you can understand that what we go through early on continues to create our reality, 
over and over again until we do something about those belief structures um you can you can see that so that that's what I, that's where i've been at with it and it's, i'm so glad that we're doing this episode today because i just had that breakthrough yesterday that i'm you know still the uh, wizard of oz it's like oh this little clear shield it doesn't look like a shield i'm here it's like we can touch a little bit even too but no 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 not too much so it's 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 interesting yeah well and that's how these things work right that we set these topics weeks in advance sometimes months in advance and then they show up exactly on time <laughs> or maybe we do our work exactly on time to go coincide with the podcast and we just don't know it because we're not looking ahead but we part of us knew it was coming so you know all of the things when you're in the flow all this stuff just shows up right so you know, let's talk a little bit about what we mean by resistance, right? Because, you know, you're talking about one, which is sort of, it's a self delusion. And that then becomes a, oh, crap, what did I do? And then you you're given the opportunity to go a little deeper. And so it's, it's, you know, we do these things in stages, right? Which is why I love Kathy's analogy so much. And you guys haven't met Kathy yet, but she's, she was on the Spirit Sherpa podcast with us. And and you'll meet, you'll meet her eventually. She'll be on the show, I promise. And, and, but the, I love her analogy, which is this idea that we are all these artisanal wells, these springs that, that, you know, spring forth energy into the world when we're born, right? We've got all of this yummy energy and we're just fully ourselves and we're in our authenticity and it's all yummy and good. And then life happens and shit gets thrown in the well, right? Just garbage is thrown in the, in the well and it's thrown in and thrown in until eventually the well stops being a spring. And now it's just a well. And then more and more gets thrown in and then it gets tamped down and bogged down until it's filled with garbage. And now it rains. And, the, oh, and now we think that we are the rain because the rain is what's in the well. And we think that that's us. And that's what gives us this limited perspective of life and limited perspective of our resources. And we are like, well, I'm only the rain. If it hasn't rained in a while, I have very little, very little water to work with. And I'm, I'm limited and I can't, and I can't, and I can't. But the rain is just rain. It's not you. You're underneath all the garbage, right? It's like, and so the work is about digging out the garbage. It's about you know, bringing it out of the well and letting the water fill the well back up and eventually become a spring again when we get enough cleared. And so, you know, when we're doing this work, we will go in stages and, you know, you'll think, oh, I just dug all this stuff out and this, it's great. And, and maybe it rains some while you're doing it. And then you're like, Ooh, look at me. Or, you know, there, it, you know, it's just, it's deeper because you've dug out more of the garbage. And so you think, oh, look at me but you haven't gotten to the level yet where you're actually springing forth. And so there's that clear shield you were talking about. Right. And so, you know, this is, it's a process. It's not a one and done as quite frankly, you're never done. So, you know, I've been doing this hardcore for 25 years and I'm still doing my work pretty hardcore. So on a semi-regular basis, right. Not nearly as often as I was, because it doesn't show up as often, but I'm still doing it. When it shows up, it's hardcore, right? Because <laughs> the stuff that's showing up at my stage is stuff that has been either buried at the assumption level where it's just, it's been assumed for so long that I don't even know it's there, right? Like you don't assume that, gra you assume that gravity is going to work, but you don't ever think oh, gravity's going to work, right? It's just there, right? So at this level that I'm working at, it's, it's at that level where you're, you're having, having to recognize that you're making an assumption about things. And so that, that becomes the difficulty at this stage. But in the early stage, it's just, you know, the constant, it's constant, right? It's just one thing after another, after another. And you're just like, ah, and the hard part is not judging yourself about it, right? Because the judgment is a resistance. And you go, oh, I should be done with this. I swear to God, I worked so hard at it. I, I dug into it as hard as I could last time. And, and I thought I was done. No, you're not done. Okay. <laughs> There's certain issues that you're going to come back to over and over and over again. And, and every time you'll be like, ah, I was done with you. Why are you back? Ah. And then you eventually you're like, oh, hello, old friend. What do you have to teach me today? Eventually you get there. But 
you know, every time you, it shows up and you're like, ah, you know, you're in resistance. That's a resistance pattern. It's interesting you say that because, you know, I can feel another shamanic death around, around the corner. Uh, I've gotten all the signs that I've had over and over again. And it's funny because just a few months ago, I called you. I was like, I'm dying. And you're like, okay. Yeah. And you made some time to just, you know, answer me right there. And you laughed and not, not saying that that was like a bad thing, but because it's a great thing. And, but I've always felt like it's terrible because I resisted. I just, sometimes I just want to be with what I've created for a little bit longer but I don't, you know, sometimes you just don't get the, the choice. And, and yet you stay on the express train. So, you know, I was just going to say, I'm like, like, but you're still on the express. I mean, you're still doing the course materials and the program and you're still, you know, this is so, so you guys are fairly new, so you haven't heard this, but you know, I took 25 years worth of personal growth work and about 10 to 15 years worth of energetic training and put them into a two and a half year process. It's a four month and then two one year programs. And they're the express train. If you want to get there yesterday and you don't have 25 years or 15 years to waste and trying to get all this stuff done and figure out what you need and how to get it and where to get it from that knows what they're doing, then, you know, that's what my programs are for. And they are the express train, right? So, you know, there's the depth to which you dive in them determines the amount of change and shift that you go through. And Josh, you are a deep diver and therefore you go through massive shifts. And so, you know, as much as you complain that, you know, sometimes I just want to be where I am. You're also still on the express train. You're still moving. You could just stop in the program for a while and be still. <laughs> That's not in your nature. So, <laughs> You know, it's, you, you said it, the hard headed ones to you it's happening because you're choosing it. And this is the other piece. That's another piece of that same thing that we were talking about a minute ago about things happening to you rather than you choosing them. And that's that, that same energy, right? You know, it's, it's funny because I had that bratty voice in the beginning. I was like, ah, again. And then I was like, you know, I love all the change that's happened over the last, you know, four years. I was like, I'm just going to roll with this one and not fight it, not get all worried. Cause you know, like I, I, I have been through some rough shamanic deaths. I mean, like yes, the, 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 ver the first few I went through completely shattered my illusion of what life was in, in, in like every regard. And I was just really ill prepared for, for such a transformation that fast, which is, you know, why I ended up on your doorstep all those years ago. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you know, it's uh, it, but I, I'm feeling into it because it feel, you know, like in, in the, the, fact that the message with the heart came in right away has let me know because I've been really setting the intention with the universe to open my heart you know that I am expansive love that I want to understand love on a deeper level than I was taught or I was raised with because I know it's that that's what I want it's what I what I desire on a, a soul level and on in this physical level so I'm really excited about this this transformation so I'm I'm feeling feeling into this one yeah well, and I'm glad to hear you say it because, you know, the, the amount of things that you're going through, uh, the amount of times you're going through identity shifts, which is what a shamanic death is, it's an identity shift. And so, you know, when we, the amount of times that you're going through it, you know, you're at the stage where you should be doing that and, and embracing it. The first few times we go through it, we're like, no, <laughs> we're standing at the doorway that we asked to open with both our hands and feet against it as spirits trying to shove us through the door. <laughs> this is what we do because we're like my, our ego, whose job it is to keep us alive, right? Our, our ego is there to keep us safe. And our ego is going, no, I don't want to die. I don't want to die because your ego dies, right? And then it's reborn as something new. And so, you know, this is, it's, it's its own process, but once you've done it a few times, you start to look at it and go, oh, here we go again, right? And and then eventually you'll start to consciously step into those new identities, right? That's that's the path that I've been doing for the last eight, 10 months, right? Is stepping into the new identity. And so when you you're consciously crafting the new identity and choosing it on a daily basis rather than rather than doing work around it and then having it present to you and shove you through a door that you're like, it, it's, it, it's a whole different angle. Right. And so this is where the resistance comes in is that we, we don't know what we're getting into. We we're in the unknown. A lot of us have a lot of fear around the unknown. 
And so the fear shows up, the resistance shows up, and then we're like, screw this, I'm out, right? And, you know, I, I get this a lot from people who say, you know, I've been thinking about making a, dis you know, setting, signing up for a discovery call. And I've been thinking about it. I'm like, how long have you been thinking about it? Four months, six months, you know, I, I had to work myself up to work myself up to it. You know, I was scared. I'm like, okay, so that's a resistance pattern, right? And, and, you know, are you less scared today than you were then? No, but I was, I, I think I was just ready. I'm like, mm, I think you were just tired of resisting. <laughs> so but it's a resistance pattern, just like judging ourselves is a resistance pattern, right? It's, it's avoidance and judgment and choosing comfort over change, right? You know, oh, it's, you know, my comfort zone. I may not be super comfortable in my comfort zone in terms of, you know, day to day, it might not be so great, but at least I know it. I'm familiar with it. I think they should call it familiar zone, not comfort zone, right? But, you know, choosing that over change because change brings the unknown and brings the whole oh, crap and brings the identity shift and the, ah, uh, who am I going to be? What am I going to do? How's it going to work? I don't know. Ah, all the control patterns come in, right? All of that. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing, you know, is like the mind or the ego mind, the egoic mind will tell you, well, you like who you are now. You've already done all this work. Why would you want to go any farther? We like it here too. I mean, we didn't like it as much as we used to like it, but what if we just stayed here forever? And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> let's that get it all. Biggest resistance actually in my entire spiritual path. I had a moment, I was single, it was probably 15 years ago. I was single. I'd done a lot of work on myself. I was feeling pretty good about myself. And I was looking around me and there weren't a lot of men who could meet me where I was. And I, and all of them were taken. Right. <laughs> and I was like, and I know a lot of people. So I was taking a large sample size. Right. And I looked at it and I went, if I continue down this path, I may never be able to find a partner who could meet me. And I sat with that question for a long time. Do I, do I choose to be partnered or do I choose to be on this path? And I sat with that for three weeks, a month. It was a long time for me to just sit in that question. And ultimately I decided I would rather be on my path. I would rather do that than, than be partnered if I have to make the choice between the two. And I wasn't, you know, I was like, well, maybe I won't have to make the choice, but you know, I did, I was like, nope, this is the choice. If there, if there is a choice to be made, this is it. I choose me and I choose my path. And, you know, I was, you know, I was, I had boyfriends and whatnot in the interim, but I didn't meet my husband until 2011, no, 2014, my bad, 2014. And so it was many years later. And he and I both admit that we weren't ready for each other six months before, you know, we were both on our own paths separately doing our own things. And if we had met earlier, we would not have been ready for the other. So, but yeah, it was a big a big resistance in my path. And I, I really looked at it hard. And then, you know, there's, there's stages that you hit in your work and, you know, the, the more challenging ones will cause resistance. The bigger the resistance, the bigger the benefit to getting through what you're doing. Right. I tell people all the time when they, when they come in and they sign up for the program, they're like, I'm like, Oh, how you feeling? And they're like, Oh, little scared <laughs> or a little excited. Okay. Now scared and excited are a half turn from one another. So no big deal, right? They're basically the same emotion. And you know, the people who say they're a little scared, I'm like, great. And they're like, why do you say great? I'm like, well, because we live in the eternal moment of now and you already know before you start the program, whether it's going to work for you or not because we live in the internal moment of now, right? And so if you sign up for something and you're like, yeah, yeah, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, I don't know, right? Then it's probably not gonna work, okay? If you sign up for something and you go, <gasps> you're like, or you're excited or you're, you're scared or you're overwhelmed or you're like, ah, it's gonna work, right? <laughs> because you can feel it on the other side the moment you made the commitment. And the, the interesting thing about signing up for shamanic work is that when you sign up, you make a commitment to the universe. There's a reason I don't do refunds 
And it's because you've made a commitment to the universe when you stepped in and the universe is going to deliver whether you finish the program or not, and you're going to need the help. Okay. <laughs> that's the key. So, uh, you know, that's the, that's the piece that you've got to pay attention to when you're going through this is to make sure that you recognize that, you know, that a commitment to the universe is a commitment. It, it is not changeable, right? <laughs> universe is like, great, strap in. Here's the roller coaster ride, knock it out, right? And, and I'm not trying to scare you. I really am not. It's just, in fact, it's one of the things that I love about this work. I, in fact, years ago, Kathy used to run an event with her friends called Lumen's Gate. And this event was a transformational experience. So you know those experiences in your life that that where you're you're faced with a choice and the choice is going to change your life forever regardless of which way you decide. Well, they used to manufacture those choices, right? And so they would create a ritual experience that you would walk through and it would put you in a position to have to look at yourself in some way and make some choices or make some some, you know, defend a position or choose something or, you know, be something or whatever. And it would change you. I mean, it was an opportunity to consciously step into a process of self-evolution, right? And I looked forward to this every year. I, I would have gone twice a year if I could have, not more than twice because it was a lot, but I looked forward to it every year. And the thing was, the moment you signed up to come to the event, you were in the energy, and so I noticed that the first year I signed up like, I don't know, four months in advance and everywhere around me, I didn't even know. So the, they were very cagey about the topics because it was an initiatory process. And with initiation, you can't know what's on the other side. Right. And so their topics would be like fire in the heart and you wouldn't know what it was. There was like one paragraph description of what it was. And that was it. And you were just signing up for the, for the journey. Right. And so, you know, what would show up is throughout the time from the time you signed up, the universe would deliver you all these different smaller experiences that would help you build up to the bigger one at the end. And so, so I got into the habit once I realized this was the case, I got into the habit of shoving a check at Kathy at the very last day of the event the year before for the, for the event the next year. And she's like, we don't even know what it's going to be. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to be here. She's like, I, we, we don't know when it is. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to be here. Take my money. I want into the energetic, right? <laughs> she was just like, she was like, but, but I'm like, just take my money. She's like, I don't know how much it is. I'm like, here's $400. Tell me how much I owe you after that. When we're done, this is my deposit. I'm in. <laughs> It was just, it was just, it was just, it was this argument every year, and, I, and she would always take my money eventually. But, but I was just like, you know, I, I, because what happened was it was a smoother, easier path, right? Because when I signed up a year in advance, I could go a little bit at a time. They would give me the same stuff, but it wouldn't come like boom, 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 boom. You know, like if you signed up two two weeks before the event, God, God help you, but. <laughs> You know, it was just, they were all, it was all preparatory, right? And then different things happened to different people because different people were in different places, right? But they told the universe, I'm doing this. And the universe went, okay, let's get you ready, right? And whatever was appropriate for that person would come through for them. And so I was, I was really excited to be in the energy because it got to come slowly over a year, right? And I, you know, I was happy to do it in four months too, but I just, I wanted to be in the energy of it because I was, I, I like you, am a deep diver. And so I, I want to like suck the marrow out of it. Right. I want to dive as deep as I possibly can and get as far as I possibly can. And so, you know, having a year to really marinate in that and do that work at a very deep level. By the time I got there, I was really ready for the transformation that was coming. And so, you know, this is the sort of thing that I, uh, you know, I talk about with resistances is, you know, you could have that experience and then go, oh, I don't want to, right? And you, you know, if you cancel your, your registration to that retreat, you could opt out of that experience because that's what you were doing. But once you opt into a, a journey, like one of my courses, right? It's like you opt into the journey, you're on that journey. That journey is in place and going, you know, the moment you have access to the materials, that journey is already in process for you. 
And so, you know, some things you can opt out of, some things you can't. And so when we look at stuff like this, it's, you know, you have to be willing to be with the discomfort that shows up when you want to make change in your life, because change doesn't happen with no consequences, right? Change will change you. It will change your surroundings. It will change possibly your friends, your relationships, your, you know, everything, right? And we want something new, but then we go, oh, but I have to, I might need to let go of something that I have. It's like, I see people all the time who have really full lives and they're like, oh, I want this thing that's going to take up a lot of space, right? And you're like, I'm not so sure you do. <laughs> you seem very attached to the things that are already in your life. Where are you going to make space for? Oh, I'll make space. I'm like, mm, where? Because it's going to take up this much space. And if you don't acknowledge that it's taking up space, I don't care how much you do. There's no way you're going to be able to hold everything you're already holding and this too, right? And, and, you know, sometimes we have to let go of toxic people. Sometimes we have to let go of in, in toxic environments and, and jobs and whatever, just because, you know, we're no longer in alignment with them. And so all of this goes into our resistance patterns and the bratty voices that come out, our, little, our inner two-year-olds that go, no, no, we don't want to, no, no, mine right? It's like you get into that energy and, and, and we, we do, we get into that space and the inner child comes into play in our lives for far more than we realize. So I want to say something here because I keep, this keeps coming up every time I go into the, I don't want to energy, there is resistance. And then there is uh, so there's, there's resistance to change and then there's straight resistance. And so straight resistance. So I was talking about this yesterday. We, we, we do a spiritual mastermind for, we do a mastermind for spiritual coaches. And I had that call yesterday. It's on the last Wednesday of the month. And the, the call was, we, we were talking to somebody about she, she has a lot of resistance around technology. She's a spiritual coach and psychic and all the other things. I love her. Yeah. And she just hates technology, right? She's like, ah, I don't want it. And I was like, you know what? I have days where I'm like, I don't want it. She's like, I get so drained. I'm like, I know exactly what you're talking about. There are certain pieces of technology that I just can't do. I just look at them and I'm like, ah, right. And, and other times I'm able to do them, but only after a period of resistance, right? And so we were talking yesterday and I was like, look, I listen to my body. If my body goes, then I don't do it. And I come back to it the next day and my body will go, Ugh, and I won't do it. And I'll come back to it the next day and my body will go, oh, and I won't do it. And I'll come back to it the next day and my body will be like, eh. and I'll be like, eh, okay, or eh, not okay. And I'll go, eh, not okay. And I'm like, okay. And the next day it'll be eh, okay. <laughs> all right, we can do it today. I'm like, okay. But it has to be first thing in the morning when you have a lot of energy and you, you have all your, your faculties and everything. Oh, okay. All right. We'll do that. But I listen to my body about it. Right. So sometimes our bodies are in resistance. So, you know, classic example of this is I was, I just got a letter a couple of days ago from a company that said, you're using our font illegally. And we got this font off of a free font website. And so we were like, it was listed on this free font website. So our all right, is this a scam? <laughs> and they were like, no, you know, and I looked them up and they weren't a scam, but evidently the free font website is a scam and they were stealing fonts that they weren't supposed to. And we had no way of knowing that. And so, you know, we need to go back and rebrand the entirety of the podcast to a new font. And, you know, you're probably not even going to notice the difference of the font because we picked one that's very close and it's fine, but you know, it's, it's work, right? But I have been in resistance. So I've been pre-recording the Tuesday, the tap in Tuesdays and the Thursday thoughts. I've been getting those done because they're videos and I'm doing them and you know, whatever. And I've been getting them done in advance. And I, I went through and did a batch at the beginning of the podcast. And now I'm and for the last three weeks, I haven't been able to do any of them. I've been looking at them going, there's no energy there for it. And I didn't know why. And I was just like, well, I got plenty. I'm okay. You know, I can wait. And, and then this letter came through and I'm like, oh, because I would have had to re-render every freaking video 
in order to do this, right? And I'm like, oh, that explains why I didn't want to do this. And now if I think about doing them, I have energy for it again, right? It's like, ah, now I know why. So sometimes that's where the resistance comes from. And so, you know, before you push yourself, before you are mean to yourself, wait a little bit and see if the resistance is for a reason, because sometimes it is. Sometimes there's something coming that you're just going to save yourself a lot of time and effort for if you just listen to it because there's no energy for it. Now, no energy for it is different than, I don't want to, right? <laughs> if, you, if you go to do something, you're like, oh, I've just got no energy. That's, that's a wait. I don't want to is a resistance, right? It's a that's a resistance, right? That's something that you have to address. And different resistances are addressed in different ways. This is one of the things that we teach in the Welcome to the Woo program, right? But knowing your core resistance and the thing that you use most often is super helpful, right? That's, you know, again, that's, that's something that we teach. But, you know, when you know what your default resistance is, then you can watch for it when it shows up. So, you know, my default resistance is I'm too busy, right? That's my default resistance is I, I'm going to entertain, I'm going to keep myself so busy that I can't think about it. I don't have to think about it. I, so it's an avoidance resistance, right? That's my default. What's yours? Avoidance. You know, I will, I, if there is something that I have to do, that seems like it's going to be the thing that up levels my life and I know it, but you know, it's kind of a mix of the, I don't want to, you know, but I'm like, well, I have all this other stuff to do first, you know? So I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start like five projects at the same time. And I will cycle around until I can't get any farther in one with my skill set at its current state. And I'll just jump to the next one, next one, next one, next one until I'm at the place again. Now I'm not, and now I'm just going through shit. I don't know how to do over and over again. It's a, a vicious hell loop once it gets to that stage. And because another one is that I refuse to ask for help. You know right. what I mean? Like I, I don't want to be a bother. So I will sit there and try to figure out myself at my own detriment. When a 15 minute conversation with someone who actually knows their shit would, <laughs> would just propel me right through it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, you know, this is what we do. I mean, for some people it's amnesia. They forget what they were, were going to be working on for other people. It's, you know, the choosing comfort over change or, or, you know, you know, I'm the only person in my family who's doing this differently. I can't, can't keep going because then I won't belong to my family. You know, there's, there's lots of different reasons, you know, but, but we all have our own default resistances and that resistance is the thing that holds us in place. And, and, the judgment is probably the biggest resistance I see people do because, you know, they'll, they'll get off track or they'll go into their other resistance, the avoidance resistance, right? It's like, you know, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And then I go, oh yeah, I probably should have just gone and done this because I just did a whole bunch of stuff that isn't going to matter. <laughs> so and, and so, you know, there's, there's this thing where you can go into a place of, oh, you know, I probably should have done this and, and the five seconds of that, right. Or you can go into, ah, I'm, I can't believe I did this. This was such a waste of time. I'm such a terrible person. I can't do this. I'm, I don't know why I'm trying. It's so hard. I can't, I don't know. <laughs> you know all of the things, right. How, how, how many times can you whack yourself in the head? Right. And that is, that is a resistance pattern, whether it's five seconds or 20 minutes, right? It's a resistance pattern. And if you stay in that resistance pattern, you'll stay where you are. And so, you know, we, we can shift from one resistance pattern to another, from an avoidance to a judgment or a judgment to an avoidance or to a, you know, choosing comfort over change or whatever, right? There's lots of different ways to, to play in the resistance. Yeah. It all arena, falls right? under the same umbrella of not getting to the next stage. Yes. So. Exactly. And so, you know, there's a lot of pathways that, that we learn how to, to travel, but, you know, this is one of the things that I find most frustrating about the school system is that it does not, you know, it teaches you all this stuff, but, but you don't learn anything about emotional intelligence. You don't learn anything about how to evolve yourself as a person. You don't learn anything about how to have conscious communication. You know, there's, all of these things that are super everyday, real life important, 
but you know, you have to memorize a lot of things that you'll probably never use. Right. Uh, because they, they can be tested. Right. I, I and, opted out of that energetic very early on. I knew something was up. It didn't take me, but first grade. And I remember staring around the classroom, like, Nope. <laughs> you know, like I, I just knew that something was off and, you know, it, it carried into my, into my adult years. And now, you know, there's a lot of confirmation of, you know, what you're, what you're talking about is, you know, the, the, there's certain levels of programming that come with that and that don't teach us critical thinking. Critical thinking used to be something they taught, yes, you know, did. and and that's why are we not learning critical thinking? That is a huge red flag. <laughs> Yeah, it makes you question authority. And when you question authority, then you question the powers of be, and then they can't control you as easily. That's why we don't have critical thinking in the schools anymore, which is terrifying. But yeah, it's, it's, it, don't get me wrong. I think it's super important to learn history and social studies and about different cultures and all the things, because those are the ways that we understand each other. And those are the ways that we don't repeat the past, which we're in the US, we're currently repeating the past. Uh, we're not repeating US past we're repeating germany past at the moment but it, it is coming and so the you know when you don't know your history then it's easy to not recognize it when it shows up again and you know but these skills are life-changing they they impact every aspect of your life you know people talk to me about the classes and they're like well you know what what is it going to get me i'm like well you know you're going to cut your stress levels in half you're going to feel mentally, emotionally, and energetically safe. You're going to feel comfortable in your own skin. You're going to learn how to claim your space and set your boundaries and own your power and internalize your sense of value and learn how to love yourself. You're going to learn how to hold space for yourself and be able to do your deep shadow work. And you're going to learn what your spiritual gifts are. It is going to impact every single aspect of your life, your business, your home, your career, your relationships, your family dynamics. You're, it's going to make you, you're going to teach your children these skills and they're going to end up head and shoulders above everybody else because they have them, you know, all of it. It, it is an all encompassing piece of work that you learn in the process. And it's, you know, this is one of the most important things that we need to learn in this life is how to manage ourselves, how to manage our energy, how to make conscious choices and bring them into form through our identity shift that we are willing to embrace to create that new reality, right? All of these things are foundational skills, <laughs> you know, foundational skills that we need to know. It, otherwise, we're just wandering around blindly, you know, trying this and trying that and hoping it works. Yeah, I was, I was, until I stepped into this work, you know, I was completely a victim of my own work, sleep, entertainment cycle. That was it, you know, like I didn't know there was anything else out there. I was, exactly. I was resistant to, to the thoughts of it, you know, like I grew up on George Carlin. So, you know, like I, I, I didn't do any work because I was like, well, that guy fucking said it all. And I love everything he said, you know, so I, I just kind of went through life meandering until, you know, the path came calling and, and, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't shut up anymore. <laughs> and there was a, that's how I, I ended up here. Yeah. That, that tends to happen to shamans. <laughs> we get dragged yeah. kicking and screaming down the path. Yeah, I was kicking and screaming. Yes. Yes. You and me both, baby. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, this, these are skills. And you can, they can be learned, but you have to be aware that they exist and you have to be aware that there's a reason for them. And you have to be aware that there's a benefit to going through the effort to learn them in order for you to actually be in a position to even choose it, right? Because up until then, you're just asleep and you don't know, right? You don't know that you don't know. And so, you know, this is the thing that <laughs> I, I, when I first started with this work, I had it as a book and the book used to have a warning at the front of it that said, warning, you know, <laughs> once you start reading this book, your life will never be the same. It's like learning how to read. When you are, when you can't read, you don't know what the signs say and therefore they're not relevant. But once you learn how to read, you will never not know what the signs say anymore. You may choose to ignore them, you may choose not to read them, but you will always know what they say. So there is no going back once you step on the path, right? And, you know, that's true. That's true. And, and it's both, you know, it's good 
if you're continuing on the path, but if you decide to turn around and, and run away and put your head in the sand and ostrich for a while, it makes life a little difficult unless you keep your head in the sand because then you can't see, right? <laughs> Is there ostriching at this point? I don't know. You know, like you? I, I, no, I, you're too far. <laughs> Is that an option? Like, I would, I not, not, not that I, I wouldn't want to, you know, I go, like pull your ass out of the sand. You know, <laughs> like, we were talking a while back and I, I said, you know, it wouldn't matter if I won the lottery, if I hit for a billion dollars, I'd still be doing this work. You know, mm -hmm. I, I would. And it's because it is, it's more important than anything else that I've come across in this life, you know, because it's, it's about giving life meaning and purpose and, just living that work, sleep, entertainment, you know, process was so debilitating on a soul level for me that this is the only way, you know, for me. And then spirits made it, you know, abundantly. Because <laughs> they don't even, you know, they don't even need me to read the signs. They're just like, here, you know, <laughs> like that's right here in your contract. <laughs> this is what Caboose. you are doing. <laughs> so, I'm like, all right, let's get it on. So, all right. So I'm going to wrap this up, but I want to give you guys a thought for the day and something for you to consider. Uh, and I want you to notice where you are in resistance in your life right now. Just spend 10 minutes after this podcast is over and just be in silence and look at your life and say, where am I in resistance? Where am I resisting change? Where do I know change needs to happen? And it's not. And recognize what the patterns are there. How are you avoiding it? What is it that you are doing to put in the way of it? Are you judging yourself? Are you avoiding? Are you choosing something? You know, choosing comfort over change? You know, where are you? Where are you getting into your resistance patterns on the things that are going on in your life right now? And then pick one thing and engage it instead of avoid it right? Engage it instead of resist it. And so that's your, your invitation for today. I'm not going to say assignment because my people hate assignments. <laughs> so that's your invitation for today. You don't have to do it, but if, if you want to make some change in your life, if, you, if this has inspired you to, to be like, I don't want to be in resistance. This is, I don't want to do this. Then that is your invitation for the day. Uh, and that's it for today. Remember that what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next time. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm